Hawaii people of the universe, I'm Lord Salvatore and today I'm going to be talking to you about how energy affects the interactions with your dog. In this case we have a beautiful specimen here uh, that we're going to be basically energetically communicating with. Uh, you can also see there's a temperature. The temperature that you are engaging with, with another being, it resonates from you. So just imagine that if you are cool, the animal becomes cool too. If you are heated, the animal becomes heated. It's very similar to being active or inactive. So if you have an active spirit, your body becomes active and so will your animal. The non-verbal communication we're going to start with is communication of movement. Erratic movements make dogs excited. They like when things move quickly. This is partially due to their hunting instinct, but also just because they like movement to begin with. One other thing you have to understand about dogs is that when they become active, they want to go exploring. They will always try to look for another place to go, another, uh, another experience to experience. So getting a dog active is one thing. But now let's talk about how to get them to sit and lay down, but just by looking at them. So I want the dog to sit, right? So I'm going to get the dog to sit. Hey. There we go. Now what if I want the dog to lay down? I can do the exact same thing, but you gotta be intent about it. You gotta make sure the dog understands what you're trying to say. And you can do that without having to really say anything. Even if a dog is stubborn, you have to be patient. Sometimes a dog takes some time to adjust to your energy. As you could tell, that took a little while. It's partially because I haven't really known this dog that long. I practically met this dog this morning. Another thing you can do in order to get a dog to lay down whilst you're still standing, because some people don't like to lay down themselves or sit down themselves, is you can basically just let the dog know what you want by looking at them. And let me tell you, let me give you an example. When you're looking at someone and you want them to, for example, give you food, you look at them with a specific kind of look, right? Uh, it's like the Oliver Twist, can I please have some more? Uh, it's kind of like that. So you can even tell that dogs sometimes do this when they beg for food that you're eating. Uh, so you kind of have to get into that same mentality where you look at a dog and you try to send the same message. One thing I can notice about this dog in particular right now is that this dog is already a little bit tired and has had a lot of thirst earlier. I noticed, um, we actually found a puddle earlier that this dog could drink out of. So this is the one thing that you need to understand. Dogs don't always do what you want, even if you give them a command with your words. If you want to get a dog to do what you want, you gotta really bond with them first. Like I said before, I've met this dog only this morning. Getting them to sit down is already one thing. Getting them to lay down is another. Because when a dog lays down, they're vulnerable. So you're asking a dog to be vulnerable. If it's, it's, it's equal to if someone told you to get on the ground, right? Imagine someone tries to get you on the ground that you've never met before. Would you actually do that? Because I, I, I know I wouldn't. I wouldn't go and lay on the ground if someone tells me to. So this is the one thing about dogs you need to understand is that you will have to bond with them and also if they are tired they're less likely to listen to but if you give them love if you give them affection if you show them that you're there for them they're more likely to obey you in the future so it is a process you can't expect anyone including a dog to listen to you instantly but your energy does change a lot of what can happen with a dog so I think it's very important to be in tune with the dog's energy as much as you want them to be in tune with your energy. It's kind of a dance, you kind of have to synchronize with each other. You can't just expect to 
do a move and for the dog to follow that move instantly. But let's give it a try again in a moment after giving the dog some affection and some peace for a moment. Let's see if we can be more in tune with the dog now. So let's see. When you're dealing with a dog who's a little bit more tired, it's, a kind of, it's going to be a bit more difficult to be in tune with the dog. As you can see, the dog prefers to sit down now. Doesn't really want to get up. But we can get that going again. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a reason why. If we want the dog to have a certain behavior, we need to show them that behavior. We have to reflect the behavior that we want to see. So getting more active will help the dog get more active. And it also helps you be in tune with the dog, because the dog's going to realize, I am being one with this person, I am in tune with this person, we're both moving. This will help the dog relate to you as a person. So let's try again now that we've bonded a little bit. Let's try again to get the dog to lay down. So sometimes it does take a little while to get in tune with the dog, but you gotta do that dance, like I said. You gotta move with the dog, you gotta sit down with the dog, you gotta do what is necessary in order to get that energy going. So that's going to be all for now. Thank you all for watching. I hope this was helpful. And make sure to subscribe and leave a like and comment down below your favorite moments with your dog. I would love to hear about your stories. Um, and bye. It's going to be